What Emacs have done here is significantly upped the game. Emacs have drilled in on one key focus point. And that is they want the equipment you get in the ready to fly kit to stay with you for as long as possible and to not need to upgrade that immediately. So to this extent, they've completely re-engineered those three components. We're going to start with the goggles because the whole point of FPV is to be able to get the first person view. The first thing you'll notice is the goggles are actually adjustable. And what this means is no matter what your vision is, you can actually adjust the focus with IPD so you can see that beautiful FPV image. The screen is also a lot larger than previous. It's now 4.3 inches and it gives you a very large and immersive field of view. The video module itself not only contains the battery, the screen and the receiver, but it also has a couple of brand new features. The first is AV in. So through a three and a half millimeter jack, you can connect in any AV connection. The next thing that they've also done is added DVR. And one of the best things that we have about FPV is being able to share our flight footage with our friends online. And the only way to do that is through DVR. So I'm really pleased to see that these goggles have a DVR function. The screen itself is also removable from the goggles. And this is, I think, an absolute game changer because once you outgrow the goggles and you inevitably upgrade, which will happen, you can still use the the screen as an external monitor. You can even mount that to your controller and Emacs provide you with the necessary mount to connect that to the proprietary controller that they've provided you. So these goggles are absolute game changers. So let's talk about the radio because Emacs have completely redesigned this. The controller itself does have a, a little bit of a toy feeling because it is lightweight and plastic. However, the key difference here is they've really up the game in terms of the gimbals. You now have hobby grade gimbals and sticks to be able to fly. It comes with the 18650 battery and you can charge it with USB. There's also a trainer port at the bottom as well. If I had to pick things which miss the mark with the controller, these are by no means deal breakers. The first is it uses the FRSky D8 or D16 protocol. But if you're not gonna have something like Express LRS, then I would have at least expected to have an external module bay. It would mean you're gonna get more longevity out of this particular radio. Is whilst there is a USB plug at the bottom, it's it's only used for charging. You can't connect that up to the computer to be able to fly in a sim. Let's talk about the Tiny Hawk 3 drone itself. One of the things Emacs have focused on here is really on the 1S performance. The previous Tiny Hawks were 1 to 2S. This is exclusively 1S with an F4 5 amp all-in-one flight controller. One of the key things Emacs have changed with the Tiny Hawk 3 is they've completely moved away from their proprietary all-in-one and are now using a more traditional sized all-in-one flight controller that has 25 and a half by 25 and a half mounts. The, the onboard VTX can produce up to 200 milliwatts of power and it also comes with the brand new Runcam Nano 4 which is an excellent FPV camera. Overall, it's a really nice package. The case itself is significantly improved on the previous one. You also get spare props, all the different mounting equipment that you need, a bag of tools and a screwdriver, which typically comes with all Emacs quads. The other thing is you only get one battery. Now this for me was a little bit of a letdown. I would have liked to have seen two batteries at a minimum included. If you are going and buying this, I would highly recommend you stock up and grab about and grab five or so batteries. Because it does have a USB charger, you can only charge two at once. So I'd strongly recommend having a set of five, which means you can have one on the quad, two fully charged, ready to go, and two on the charger charging. So you can get more airtime as you continue to fly. Now let's take a look at flight performance because the Tiny Hawk 2 was known for how well it flies. And I would have to say that the Tiny Hawk 3 is no different. It is a great flying quad. It comes with both. One of the key changes with the focus on 1S performance is the increased flight time. What Emacs really wanted to do is not provide you with a super fast, absolute ripper of a quad that you're over and done in two minutes. 
wanted to give you something that you could fly and enjoy and would give you a sustained flight time. And the way they've achieved this is by redesigning the motors and they're now 15,000 kV. I was consistently getting four to five minute flight times and I think in one instance I was able to get up to five minutes of flight time. So in terms of being able to get the most out of this and learn to fly, it's certainly going to be there. Typically when it comes to whoops, they often do struggle to perform acrobatic movers. The Tiny Hawk 3 can certainly do all of that. I had no problem doing power loops, split S's, uh, despite how much of a high wind environment I was flying in. I was able to gap the tables as well as gap my car. <laughs> I was able to hit the gaps underneath some tables as well as hit some gaps from my car. Because it is a whoop and has prop guards, it is going to bounce off items when you do have a crash. So it means you're going to be able to recover and stay in the air as opposed to just crash and hit the deck. I really enjoyed getting out and flying the Tiny Hawk 3. It brought back a lot of memories and a lot of joy from when I first learned to fly on the Tiny Hawk 2. In terms of pricing, the ready to fly kit comes in at 449 Australian dollars or 299 US dollars. Traditionally, I've had a really strong stance that you shouldn't buy ready to fly kits. And the reason for that has been you don't get any longevity out of the goggles and out of the controller. At least with these goggles, you're certainly gonna get a lot more longevity out of them. But until you're ready to add a second quad to your fleet, this controller is gonna serve you very well. So I would have no hesitancy in recommending this to buy because personally, if I was gonna be buying a Christmas present for someone and I wanted them to get into FPV or enjoy the hobby as much as I do, this is the kit that I would be buying to get them in the air. The only other thing I would add is more batteries and potentially a SD card, which it doesn't come with, for, to that Christmas present and you'd be ready to go. If you're looking to buy the Tiny Hawk 3 ready to fly kit or the Tiny Hawk 3 itself in your base in Australia, I'd strongly recommend you buy this from Phaser FPV. They are completely reputable and Reese and the team are certainly there to help you out with anything you need. I've been a Phaser customer myself for a long time and I wouldn't be doing the video in conjunction with them if I didn't actually believe in the service that they provide. If you do want to buy from Phaser, there's a link in the description. If you're outside of Australia, please look to your local FPV store as I'm sure they're going to have it. Well, that's it from me. I'm Darren from Everything Micro. FPV. Until next time, don't forget to send it.